Throwing you got guys good. working up high, you know, just throwing and blowing and going. In fact, uh, I don't know. Oh, you hope? Great, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Now, now we have taken, we have taken. How much is that? Right? This uh, box pounds. like this, and you throw it from the top. How many feet? About thirty feet? Yeah, we're about it's on the, from the top of the silo. About they take a cinder block and you throw it, and when it hits the ground, it shatters. If you take this, and it'll bounce around. <laughs> Every now and then you'll get one that breaks, but I mean, that's just. It feels like a little. It's got a little bit of sponge. It's a little bit of it does. Too. It, 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 yeah, can you imagine what it does to like these? The the bottom bottom of those, we've kind of started coloring and put, you know, put the color in there and pigment. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Do the blocks gray, and whenever you go in there and plaster your finished, you know, look, put your color, your pigment into, and that, you know, that. Uh, it's a one well, how long process. it takes to dry? Though. The plaster and everything? Uh, yeah, it wants me. That wall right there, the back wall right there, we did uh, two days ago. Yeah, so you kind of see what, about two days worth of plaster. But then, we're not but the orange side, when it's once you, more you more put this, spray this block, yeah. how, how long? Two days we can handle yeah. it, and it goes onto a pallet. Uh, cement cures out 95% after 28 days, so about a month that block is fully cured out and ready to go into a wall. We kind of cycle our blocks through to where uh, about after about a month they're able to go into You leave it outdoors? Yeah, and yeah. we can't hurt it. And the, more, and the more dry the climate, you don't have the quicker, quicker, quicker right? they do. They don't. Yeah, for all your plumbing and electrical, everybody gets in, gets out of the way. We can knock these blocks with chainsaws, uh, the whole nine yards. And you just go in there out of the same material. This is just like Lego. Out of the same material, you use all your mortar and your plaster. And like I said, this block, this, these blocks here were just all coal, you know, nasty blocks that I just didn't want to What's your plaster surface bond? It doesn't, it doesn't matter whatsoever. We've got it. Plastered or we built our house. It was kind of like the old ice. It makes it. Yeah, it's a simple, simple process. Oh, wait. These are new stuff goes there. Like the Sonic Wars, they have the last American capabilities in there. Screw that on that. It's perfect. It's that old head of But it works. All it takes. There's no steel in that whatsoever. It works. And it works. Absolutely. This is a very primitive style, uh, style of building, but it, it really works. Repayos. Repayos. Whatever repayo you have. Exactly. Why don't you get the hammer? Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, those are integrations. What will happen here is anywhere that I've got an interior wall coming off an exterior, I turn and integrate a block, and I'll run my interior walls 10 inches. This is actually going to be a restroom area. So right here, I stub this out, and that way everything ties in. And whenever I put this course up, whenever I come to that, everything's integrated. So everything is interlocked for strength and integrity. So that you know that really gives it a lot of a lot of. Uh, so it's a it's unit house, so to speak. It's exactly. It's this acts as a buttress off of that wall. So this wall right here helps support that. And when you've got a big long interior wall, that ties everything in, bonds everything together. I mean, just easy, easy building. Even the interior walls act as a, uh, a way of holding the rest of the house. Staggered. Exactly. Exactly. And being that, you know, we've got a lot of irregularities in some of these blocks, especially here, but uh, being that the mortar is out of the same material, you can level every course of block you go with material. It's all the same. And anywhere you've got, you know, gaps and holes, whenever I come in here and I trowel and surface bond that finish right there, that acts as a footing. That helps lock that plaster in. So the rougher, the better that it adheres. Kind of like two bars yeah, of soap yeah, yeah. in a shower. You know, you cannot, you cannot peel that stuff apart. And it's just strictly uh, because the cellulose sticks to the cellulose. It's wonderful. Like something like that would be, you could fill it in. No you, with, with with what do you do with the foundation? Yeah. Just use bigger blocks, uh, build the foundation with it? This is actually just, you know, we formed this up and just poured it. Uh, and it, it works great. We just go right off the first course. There's no steel reinforcement uh, vertically or and there's you know, nothing no, there. We just go straight up with our block. Uh, and and uh, John, I guess you'll tell us later on about the gunite machine. Yeah, we've uh, you know all this has been kind of hand plastered, which takes a little bit of while. You know, I've got to you know get a little wad and just trial it on. We're actually going to do some demonstrations of that. But we've figured out a way with a gunite pump where you can plaster a house in a couple of three days now. And you talk about cutting labor off. You know, that's oh, usually yeah, a big, big component time. of it. So. Uh, How about the, the timber usage instead? Yeah, instead of the steel. Uh, we figured out a way, and then working with an engineer that's drawing it out to actually use the big timbers. A lot of people want kind of this rustic look, but we, yeah, in Nicaragua, I've seen a lot of houses where they use they before they use the the wood, the timber pole for uh -huh. lighting uh -huh. or a running power line. Exactly. You know, it gives really a super strong and it gives really a really nice. Uh, yeah. 
good idea. Yeah. Good yeah. Idea. You know, that'll give you integrity, and that'll that's right. Down, and then you're just using this base. And it, 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 you know, gives it a rustic look, you know, like. Justino and I are thinking in terms of going through the middle of a, of a building with poles, poles. We and, then exactly. we, and then we just put our gable uh, uh, joist from that center over and let them rest on the very top of our block, and that way we don't have any weight yet, it's, it's holding it together, so that's what we're doing, and then the, the, the timbers or the steel inside the house can be covered up with an interior wall. There you go, yeah, and then hide you it can, up. Yeah. Yeah, you can hide it. Yeah. You know, this, here we've used kind of overkill these big I beams. I had a bunch left over from my house, and all we're doing is just budding those blocks up to that I beam. We've since, and that's what you'll see over my house. Well, the problem with that is it's great. You got plenty of strength, but whenever you go and you plaster over that the metal I beam, you know you almost got a quarter inch of plaster. Well, you know cement. All I can tell you about cement is it turns gray, gets hard to crack, and it always cracks to the easiest point. Well, right there where you've just got that quarter inch, you know it'll crack right along that beam. So consequently, what we've done now is instead of using that heavy gauge I beam, we've actually gone to like four by four square uh -huh. tubing. And that way, uh, with our block, if you lay them up ten inches, you still get a couple inch bite on each side. So you go, you completely encompass uh, that that piece of steel there, and you plaster over that, and it's eliminating a lot of the cracking. So that's a, that's a neat thing. We're evolving with this product as well. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. As you look around and see some of these recipes, I've tried incorporating some styrofoam. I wanted to keep them light. I wanted to keep that insulation value up. But I just kept reverting back to our all uh, all cellulose recipe there, and uh, you know I, I really feel as the block we've got the block and the rest of these little small things will work out. As we Where you get these cellulose? Just waste. Comes out of Houston. Houston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, from a place called International Cellulose, uh -huh. and they actually uh, we've got the distributorship for it. They actually prepackage it. Uh, it's, it's called short fiber. It's all in, in raw form, no boron treatment. Uh, we're real particular that we don't get any wax paper in there, no cardboard. It's uh, going to be a certain type, type, of, type of material, okay. you know, to work with our uh, formulas and things. And it's funny how you can tell. Uh, we got a bad batch of paper not too long ago where it actually had a bunch of, of firework or firework uh, <laughs> wrappers and things in there. Well, I couldn't get our product to perform. I mean, it's got to be a specific uh, type of cellulose that we get. So we're real particular, and, and uh, we're in with the guys down there, and we make sure, you know, kind of a quality control that we get good, good cellulose. Well, do we want to go ahead and see what... Yeah, definitely. Uh, like guys, you guys kind of missed old Josh over here. He's kind of the man, the, the rat behind the scenes, if you will. Uh, some water absorbencies. Uh, we want to kind of do a, 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 an impact test, if you will. I uh, want to kind of show you guys the, the fire uh, aspects of it. You know, a lot of things uh, that people have had problems with. You know, insurance agencies that crashed a couple years ago had a lot to do with the mold problems. I mean, it totally changed here in Texas. The whole uh, insurance, you know, the way we have insurance on homes and... We feel that we've eliminated that as far as your molds, your termites, your fire. Uh, we're getting a lot of good play out of, uh, as far as vibrations, we feel that as far as in uh, zones and where you have earthquakes and things, you know, these blocks give just a little bit and... Uh, it's not that rigid, that's so, 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 exactly. the cinder block. Yeah. Exactly. And we're currently doing a bunch of tornado uh, protocols and testing at Texas Tech. And then once that comes back, uh, you know, building this for safe, considered a safety structure is going to be really neat. And granted, you know, we may have to come in and do some reinforcing, but as far as the block itself, it's performing very well. Uh, Why don't we, do you want us to do the... What's yeah, the we're just going to do some... some and, uh, go ahead, fire away. Oh, first right. thing, Josh, do a, do a little impact or somebody want to get started on that? I think we're going to get right. started on that. Oh, else to do it at the bottom. Yeah, anybody wants to, wants to bang away, they're good after. That's pretty good sled. Josh is decently strong. He, uh... <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Want to uh, give it a whirl? Yeah. 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 Kind of like at the fair, you're going to press your girlfriend. <laughs> Don't hit the window. Testing, but that's all I need to see. If I know that a, a cutting torch will cut through a big piece of steel, uh, 